Hello, I'm Valerie Biden Owens, chair of the Biden Institute at the University of Delaware. Today, I have the privilege of introducing Congresswoman Lisa Blunt Rochester. Lisa has represented Delaware since 2017. Thank you, Congresswoman, uh, for joining us on this episode of All Politics is Personal, a program where we introduce the public to the person behind the politician. We know anyone can research your policies and accomplishments, but that's not what we're here today to talk about. We're here today to talk about you. Excellent. And <laughs> what it's like growing up blunt. <laughs> I love that. Growing up blunt. Sounds like a TV show, yeah. actually, now that I think about it. I guess my earliest memories are growing up in Philadelphia with my grandparents. My dad, uh, Ted Blunt, who you know very well, um, he actually was in college when I was born. And so my mom lived with my grandparents oh. and I lived with them. And as a little girl, being the first child, the first grandchild for both sets of grandparents, um, there was this very special bond. Uh, my one grandmother, my dad's mom, uh, Helen, she would always call me most precious. Oh. And then um, my Fa uh, my mother's parents, we lived with them predominantly, and um, it was just a special time. And I also think back to the fact that my mother's brother had um, gone, was stationed in France. Um, he was in the military, and he actually died there when I was one years old. And I, I think even at that young age, I could feel empathy for my family and just a strong connection. And it's probably something I've never ever talked about. You know, I, I, that's like the earliest memories were just being so part of a very, very close knit extended family as well. Um, my mother's family was very close. They, every Sunday people would get together. We had family picnics every year in the summer and a Christmas dinner every, you know, in the, in, at Christmas time. And it was just, a very um, loving, tight-knit family. There's something to be said about multi-generational homes, you know? Yes. I mean, we had it uh, in my family growing up. We didn't have the same relative living with us all the time, but we right. had a relative living with right, us all right, the time. Right, right, right. And when you had these family gatherings, yeah. did... Uh, did you tell the same old stories and the same dynamics? What what were yeah, they like? Yeah, you know, it was always kind of like the same dynamics, as you said. But there was... Um, it was interesting to think back to it because I was only in that multi-family situation until my sister, Thea, was born. So I'm the oldest of three girls. And um, so Thea came and then Marla came and we moved out of my grandparents' house. My, my dad graduated and, you know, Where I Where did he go to school? He went to Winston-Salem State University uh, uh, under, undergrad and um, then Rutgers for the School of Social Work where my sister graduated from with a master's in social work as well as my daughter. And um, that was just always a part of who we were. Um, but, uh, you know, it was always these big family gatherings, a lot of food. Food was central. And um, I had my grandparents were just incredible cooks. Uh, I have to say on my mother's side, my father's mother could not cook at all. Do you cook? Oh, I, I love to cook, but I haven't cooked in, it feels like years. You know, I, I'll cook. I'm, I'm the turkey person at Thanksgiving. I cook the, you know, the yeah. big, big yeah. meal. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's food, um, faith. Um, part of the family was just very much um, very spiritual. Um, and, and then a lot of dancing. Um, we love to dance. You know, that's a part of our family history ritual, no matter what. It could be just Sunday dinner at my mom's and we will turn on like, you know, Stevie Wonder or somebody and just everybody just breaks out dancing. May I come, Michael to, Jackson. May, may I come to one of those? Oh, I'd yes. rather dance than anything. <laughs> oh, and, yeah. I, and I don't like to cook yeah. much. So if you've yeah. got the food. Yeah. Oh, we love and it. I we got some it. moves. I can I, dance. I know you got moves. Yeah. I've seen you dance. Yeah, I can do yeah. it. Yeah. You talked about school. Yeah. Yeah. And you were a, a single mom who went to school yeah, yeah. Uh, in college? Yeah. Well, you know, it's funny because, of, and, and for anybody watching, I think one of the lessons is that I, in undergrad, I ended up in three different schools. I started at Villanova. Did you have a problem, child? I had, yeah, money. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that was the, pro the, money, the problem was money. I, I got into Villanova, made it to the dean's list, and could not find money. 
resources. And so then I transferred to University of Delaware. Thank God University of Delaware was there. Um, and that was kind of a gap year. And then I got married at 20, which is like unheard of, you know, today probably. And even then my, my dad broke out all across his face because he was like, oh Lord. But I got married, ended up um, living in Italy f at the age of 20 because my uh, former husband was a basketball player. And so we lived in Italy and I, he was in Italy, Spain. My son was born in France. And, but I made a promise that I would not, you know, quit school. So I came back and I would fly back and forth to, to Europe and I went to school and wait, you went to school here in America. I went to school in America. In the United States. And then I, like, during what? the break, I would, you know, go overseas. That's a, that sounds glamorous, but that's tough. It was, it was tough. It was long distance relationship. And, um, but I ended up graduating, uh, from Fairleigh Dickinson, which was great. And, you know, I ended up getting pregnant after that and having my son in France. And, uh, so it, it's been a, a real journey. Did you live with your mom and dad when you came, when you were commuting? So when I was coming back and forth, no, I had, we had a, an apartment. Um, and then, then I actually moved into a house in Delaware and, um, just always had roots in Delaware. So, yeah. And then after he stopped playing basketball, I ended up getting accepted into uh, I, there's a whole long story there about meeting Tom Carper and doing an internship for him as a mom with, you know, a two year old and pregnant at the time. And I was a grad student at UD. And from there, it just kind of started this chain of events. What was your yeah. first job? Yeah. First job was actually McDonald's on Market Street in Wilmington. So To, to where you are now. That's yeah. okay. Yeah. Everybody yeah. should pay attention yeah. and, and listen. Oh, I know. I, I read something about, um, your, you said you wanted a, a telephone, and your uh, your dad said, well, then, "Get a job, get a job." I and said, I had the same yeah. pink princess phone yeah, that yeah. you had. You know, mine was gold. It was the the princess phone, yeah. and it was gold. But um, that we were big time with. Oh, oh, you have your phone in your room. Sure, we for were. Sure. You're determined to finish college. Yes. What was the career goal? What did you want to be when you grew up? It's really funny. As a little girl, I actually tried everything. I mean, I was, my sisters will tell you, I had my own neighborhood newspaper. Um, I had a doll hospital where I would like, if a doll got hurt, I would, you know, fix it. I got a chemistry set um, when I was like around 12 and I loved it. And I, you know, I, until I like blew up a test tube and threw it and the rug yeah. caught on fire. Besides that, I knew that was not going to be my career, but I wanted to be a biochemist and like find out like the cure for sickle cell or cancer. Um, but then as I got into school, like into high school, I loved English and I loved social studies. I loved learning I about other cultures, and, which like when I think about it, I ended up going to yeah, many living places in other cultures, yeah. yeah, that I studied, and so it, it, those are the things that like really got me excited. So I, when I graduated, I remember putting in the yearbook that I wanted to study international law, and my goal was just world peace. You know, as a kid, I just felt like if we could just understand oh, pick each something other. easy, huh? I know. World peace. I know. Yeah. I know. And I'm still striving for it. I'm yeah. Like, it's still, you know, part of who I am. What, what yeah. flipped the switch for you to go into elective office? I mean, because that's a big yeah. deal. Yeah. Uh, being yeah. an active private citizen, but right. running for office. Right. Especially in Delaware, the first woman. Yeah. And the first African-American to be yeah. uh, in a position in in a, a representative in, gov in in Delaware. Yes. That's a big deal. Well, I, I will tell you what- I know you had some steps up to it, but, yes, that's but right. what what started you on that road? Well, you know, I it's, it's funny because when I think back, I mentioned the internship that started, you know, in Tom Carper's office in 1989. So as this intern, as this caseworker who was working on housing issues, I, I got, a, a, and, and social security and disability issues, I got to learn a lot of, substantive things, um, then becoming his secretary of labor, um, deputy of health and social services. But I never ran for anything. And I saw my dad run for office, as you know. Um, he was our city councilman in the first councilmatic district in Wilmington. And our council president. And then he went on to be council president. But it's a different, different thing when you run for office yourself. It is... Um, 
a whole level of different. And it really took a unexpected tragedy to propel me into running for office. Tell um, me about that. So after a 20-year uh, marriage with ups and downs, you mentioned being a, a single mom, um, I ended up getting divorced at the age of around my 40s, early 40s. And I, you know, it was a moment where I had to figure out what's going to happen for me and my kids. And um, I ended up working for the Urban League and working in the city of Wilmington and the surrounding area. But I went to a Christmas brunch um, in 2003, I think it was, at B.B. Coker's house. And oh, you know God, B. bless her. Yes, yeah. yeah. So, and, and I went for unexpectedly, and I ended up meeting this guy who had also gone to University of Delaware. We just never met at the same time, back 20 years before that. And we knew all the same people, and um, I'm getting divorced. He's ended a, mar a relationship, and we ended up having one date before he had to fly back to China, where he was working you as like an engineer. You like these guys who live uh, I know. off, the, off I, the continent, huh? Which I, you know what, I'm so glad you brought that up, because I also think that's a really good point, that a lot of people just assume, they don't, we don't know about each other, we don't know all of our experiences, and that these were two black men that were in Europe, in Asia, around the globe, and doing incredible things and representing incredibly. And so I ended up um, quitting my job, selling my house. My daughter, I put her in college, and um, I ended up moving to China for love, which is where Charles was working, and just had the most incredible experiences of years? my life. We were together from 19, well, from uh, age 42 to 52, because not at, enough years. Not enough, because at 52, he, we had moved back to the States, and he had gone on a business trip, uh, played a game of basketball before his meetings, ruptured his Achilles tendon, and blood clots ultimately went to his heart and lungs, and Charles passed away. Um, love of my life, just... And, you know, during that time, it was such a challenge to, to just get up, and so to people that are going through, I feel you. I feel the, their pain. And um, that whole year, I was just mad and sad and, you know, not sure what to do with my life. And one of my good friends from college, my roommate that I hadn't seen in 30 years, wrote in uh, a message in Facebook, inboxed me to say, you know, Lisa, I... I, I have to tell you, God told me that your work is not done. And I said, I know, I just don't know what it is. And she said, you're a writer. Go look in your journals. Go look in your writing. And I found an entry from the year 2000 where I talked about running for Congress and all the reasons why I couldn't. Mm. I'm in this tough marriage. I don't have the kind of money or... You know, I don't, I, I, all the reason I had never been in a debate and here I was, I stepped up to run and the turning point was going to the supermarket on Governor Prince and Boulevard for those who are not from Delaware and seeing a dad in front of me in the supermarket with three kids putting back a bunch of grapes because they were $9. I was like, you're okay. Charles left everything in order. You have a place to live. You have food. But there are a lot of people who are struggling and who need to, to know that it's okay and things will get better. You're not and alone. You're not <laughs> alone. And I decided to run. And my daughter said, Mom, <clears throat> you picked your lowest low to reach for your highest height. And I did it. We did it. Delaware did it. And when, when, when I got elected, I mean, what an incredible day to be the first woman, to be the first person of color to represent the first state. And what an incredible person to understand. Empathy is a fancy word, yeah. and it simply means yeah. to feel, as in to yeah. absorb. Yes. And yeah. my mom used to say that uh, to us, that uh, every life, um, uh, there, there'll be tragedy yes. in every in every life. Yes. But, uh, Giving up—that that's inevitable. Yeah. But giving up 
<clears throat> is unforgivable. Yeah, yeah. And you had, you know, tragedy, tragedy chisels the character, I think, yes. more than the spoils of victory. It's so true. And it's the loss so that you had, and you turned it in to purpose. Yes. yes. You remind me someone very close to me that I um, love very dearly. Well, that's, he did the same thing. That someone Get up. called me when I was in the hospital, when I don't even know how he knew where I was, and found me in a hospital in Boston and let me know um, that saying that he says to families about it, it, there will come a day when the mention of your loved one's name will bring a smile to your face before it before. brings a tear to your eye. And I, I remember even that day, and I thought of him and because I was getting off the train and uh, at, uh, in, you know, here in Union Station in Washington. And I, I was like, I'm actually smiling today. And it was, it was actually his, Charles's birthday. And I was like, oh, okay, I'm, I'm not crying right now. I'm thinking about the joy and the blessing. And one of the big things for me is a scripture that says all things work together for the good. It's like even the bad things, even in this present moment for our country, what is the darkest opens our eyes and makes us either recommit and to say what's important to us. This moment is so important. It's, it's what so Kierkegaard important. says, faith sees best in, in the, the dark. dark. Exactly. And you are the living, breathing example of all politics is personal yes. because it was the personal, the yes. click, the yes. empathy yeah. of that father, yeah. three children, yeah. putting back the grapes. Yeah. And look what you've done, putting all those grapes on all those other tables in wow. Delaware and wow. many more. Thank you for your inspiration. You said loss is inspiration. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, yeah. you live it, lady. So thank you. <laughs> you too. Thank I you. love you, Val. All right, Congresswoman, as a Biden, I have to ask you this question. Okay. What's your favorite ice cream? Ooh, uh, I love mint chocolate chip. Ah. I love mint chocolate chip. Okay, uh, that's, that's a big one in our house. Do you share? The great thing is nobody in my house likes it, so I get it all. Oh. I don't have to share. <laughs> well, I'm the only girl, so I never share. <laughs> I had my own. What profession other than your own would you like to attempt? I know you said as a kid you experimented with I several, did, but I what did. would you now, if you weren't a congresswoman, what do you think you might do? Well, if I wasn't doing this, I think I'd probably be writing. And what's the name of the book you already did write? Thrive, which was about 34 women from 18 countries with one goal, to thrive. Okay. Yeah. Uh, one word to describe yourself. Seeker. Favorite TV show? Oh, it, it just ended. This is us. Okay. Yeah. Uh, favorite music? I start my day every day with gospel music. That is like my thing, you know, really good gospel music. Um, but uh, but anybody who knows me knows I love Beyonce, so I'm, <laughs> I'm part of the beehive. Do you have a hidden talent? I love to cook. I mean, like I could, I make like fresh guacamole, fresh hummus. Um, I, I, I do all all kinds of, and I got an air fryer during the pandemic, so whew, it was off the charts with the air fryer. If you had a superpower, what would it be? I wish that I could like touch the ocean and have it be revived again. I wish I could, you know, wave my hands in the air and have the, have the planet be Jeez, healed. you don't mess around. Yeah. Holy would, crap, I thought you wanted something easy, you know, <laughs> but you're going to touch the ocean and heal yeah, it? Yeah, wouldn't that be incredible? I'm sticking with you, girl, you know. Wouldn't let's, it be something? Yeah. Touch a tree and it bloom and blossom. Wouldn't that be incredible? Uh, yeah, it would make you a saint or a miracle worker. <laughs> but a superpower. I, okay, I want to be with you. Yeah. Uh, one last thing. What's your theme song? Don't Rain on My Parade by Barbra Streisand. And I will tell anybody, don't just Google the song. Watch the movie. Watch Funny Girl. Watch Funny Lady. Just epic. When she sings, don't tell me that. Like, I, I don't want to sing because that is one of the things I don't do well is sing. <laughs> um, that's a power I wish I had. But I just love that song. And I think it... If on those days when you just need to be uplifted, you need to hear that I got this. I got this. And you don't tell me what oh, I, I can can't say do. This, I could all say about you, though, <laughs> this girl's on fire. That would go I for you, that. too. I love that song, too. Thank you very, very much. I'm, I'm sorry that I had to come to Washington. I, we'll have to do this in Wilmington. I love it. Again. That.
And thank you to the Stavros Niarchos Foundation. And remember, all politics is personal. Thank you.